welcome to Rising. Happy Monday. It is picture day here at Rising, we learned, um, but I think we're, we're clashing. We did slightly similar things. It's true, but Ra Robbie, look, the silver lining is that, you know me, I brought options. Okay. So we can work this through. It'll be okay. All right. Well, we have to get along well enough today to be able to successfully take pictures at the conclusion of the show. I'm optimistic, so. Robbie. Well, are you? Don't count us out. <laughs> We'll find out. What are we starting with? All right. Well, Elon Musk has reinstated the X account of controversial commentator Alex Jones after taking a poll of users on the platform. 70% of respondents to Elon's survey voted yes. Here's a bit of Jones's message to his followers after the poll went live. I was one of the first big dominoes to fall. And since then, we've seen governments and big corporations working to suppress the ideas, the thoughts of the people, not just of America, but the world, and to openly engage in election meddling. And Elon Musk has valiantly been leading the fight against that, so I salute him. But it was Tucker Carlson having me on last week that really broke the internet and put this issue front and center, because people got to actually hear what I actually say versus edited sound clips. So I'm asking everyone, this is a very important referendum on free speech, not just for America, but the whole world. Now, about a year ago, Musk initially declined to reinstate Jones's account, tweeting this in apparent reference to the InfoWars host's legal battles with the families of Sandy Hook victims. Quote, my firstborn child died in my arms. I felt his last heartbeat. I have no mercy for anyone who would use the deaths of children for gain, politics, or fame. Musk actually got around to asking Jones about the whole Sandy Hook thing. That's a quote during the Twitter spaces hosted last night. Let's tune in. I apologized on Patrick Ben David's show five years ago. I, I mean, these are prominent ones. I apologized sure. on, on every show, and I'll say it again. I apologize that I just gave my commentary, because I'm really just a guy that, a talk radio host, so I do that on the internet. I just take calls and interview guests, and that I play devil's advocate, and if that hurt people's feelings, I apologize. But I did not send people to your houses. I, I did not pee on graves. I, I don't know any of the stuff that went on. And Liberal Twitter, of course, was in, up in arms over Jones' reinstatement. Axios editor Dan Primack tweeted in response, nothing to see here, just the owner of this site and a presidential candidate chatting it up with a man indicted for rape, human trafficking, and another who lied about dead kids to harass their grieving parents. This may really be the bottom in reference to, I believe, Andrew Tate and Vivek Ramaswamy also being involved in that call. Um, others on the platform, however, celebrated Jones' return to X. Daily Wire host Andrew Clavin tweeted that despite the fact that they sometimes say absurd, dishonest, and even hateful things, I believe Joe Biden and Alex Jones should continue to have X accounts. Free speech should be free. Elon Musk is getting this right. So this was a, a major development. Alex Jones had been off the platform since, I believe, 2018 mm -hmm. um, for, uh, for the very controversial uh, speech he was engaged in. He's obviously been sued successfully by the Sandy Hook victims, um, now being brought back on the platform. Um, so I have a number of thoughts about this. My first, my most negative thought toward Elon on this whole thing is the, I strongly don't, I neither like nor understand the policy by polling approach. Mm -hmm. Like, what is it? It's totally contrary, in fact, to the first to the free speech mm -hmm. outlook. If your if your position is this is a free speech platform, why are you polling people on whether we're going to let people back? It's not that this is. I mean, the First Amendment is a quintessential. The majority does not decide. Mm -hmm. This is a, a rule to protect speech, even if it's unpopular, even if it's widely despised by the vast majority of people. Mm -hmm. So it's also it's also not workable to do policy by poll, and it's just random when he decides. Let's call for a vote on this. So I don't like that, and this is not the first time Elon has done that. I don't like that aspect of it. Yeah. Otherwise, I broadly agree, and I, I share Elon's perspective. I understand that um, he, he said permanent bans should be rare or maybe even non-existent. Mm -hmm. Alex Jones was sanctioned for the speech and has now been let back on the platform, gets another chance, can still be subjected to sanction if it goes wrong from here, can be subjected to the fact-checking mechanisms of community notes. That seems okay to me. Yeah, it seems to me that the problem is, to your polling point, is it an advantage to folks who are extremely famous with huge platforms like Alex Jones, who can go on a show and say, hey, there's a poll out to see if I can get back onto Twitter, go and participate in it, my millions of fans, versus another kind of person who may or may not have that ability, who may or may not have that kind of access to an audience, and may or may not be that popular, and that dovetails with your point. This shouldn't be about popular people 
being able to have access to websites and unpopular people or unpopular opinions, more importantly, not having access to those websites. My other issue is that back when Alex Jones was first removed from the site, it wasn't clear what Twitter policy he was actually violating. Now, Alex Jones lied about Sandy Truth having happened. He denied that those children were killed, and he had to pay over a billion-dollar judgment in court as a consequence. I, from a personal subjective moral perspective, find that to be unconscionable. However, it's not clear that being a bombastic liar right. uh, is a, in violation of a policy on an app like Twitter. And when people asked Elon Musk about this, when he took over the, the, the website last year, he wasn't the one that made the decision to kick Alex Jones off, but this came up when he bought the website and said it was going to be a bastion of free speech. He specifically said, I am not letting Alex Jones on because of a personal tragedy I've had in my life with my own deceased child, and I just simply would not let him on. And at that time, I said, well, emotionally, as a human being, I understand that rationale, but as a policy that's going to prescribe the behavior on this app, that makes no sense. So if you're personally affected by something bad that someone says, if you have a personal relationship with the nature of somebody's critique, you're not gonna let them back on the app. But if your child had survived, if you had never had any children, suddenly Alex Jones would be on the app. Yeah. What if we have different life experiences? What if matter, what matters to you doesn't matter to me or someone else on the app? It just makes no right. sense and it has nothing to do with free speech. Right, and, and that's the key because of course, I mean it is, he owns the company, it's his platform. Technically, the rules don't have to be consistent. It can be, a, it's the dictatorship of Elon Musk. It's his company. If he wants to randomly and arbitrarily ban people and bring them back, he can. If he wants to, at some point, subject people to polls to decide whether they can get to, he, he can do all that. He can run his own personal little social media hunger games. It's not, it's not a legal, these aren't legal consequences. This is just a private company with policies. But he has said that he wants the policies to reflect the First Amendment, that he wants it to be a town square, that he wants to, it to be a place for free speech. And if you say all those things, then you should, your policies should be fair and consistent and, uh, and transparent. And, and, trans and, yes, and how and transparent. can you have transparency when it's all just your personal peccadilloes that are yeah. driving decisions? Yeah, so it's interesting. Um, I I, uh, I suspect you know Alex Jones coming back. Some of what Tucker's doing. If Trump ever shows back up on the platform, um, I, I can see where this this is going to go. This whole conversation because keep in mind that. So Alex Jones can still he can suffer he suffered consequences for his speech. He was sued by the Sandy Hook victims. Um, you know that gets to, into some complicated legal harassment and libel and you know because fr frankly if you favor those that legal action on you know in some sense you favor some exceptions to free speech which most people do. Yeah. The Supreme Court has recognized some exceptions to free speech. So he he suffered a, a billion dollar consequence for his speech. Um, he can't now on the platform. The platform is immune because of Section 230. So if he said things of that nature again on the platform, you could still sue him. Mm -hmm. You can still hold the person accountable who says the lies, who, who engages in the harassment, who does the inciting. You can, uh, consistent with our f First Amendment understanding in America, uh, our robust protection for free speech, it's not absolute, and you can hold people responsible in those, in those situations. You can't hold the platform responsible. You can't hold. You can't sue Elon Musk for the things Alex Jones says because of the way the internet mm -hmm. law is, is structured, Section 230. So I'm, I am waiting for the other shoe to drop. I am waiting for there to be significant pressure um, from, uh, from legislators, from mainstream media people who are so worried about hateful and dangerous speech online, for them to realize really the thing that is really going to, if we want to advance you know, what we would describe as moderation and I might describe as censorship, the way to do it is to target that law. Not that I'm giving out advice, I'm afraid of that happening. I'm saying <laughs> sure, that's going to be course. a bad thing. I wonder what you make of some of the liberal criticism of the group of fellows that was uh, convened mm -hmm. on this call, the idea that Vivek Ramaswamy, who wants to be president of the United States, was in a pseudo-social, political, platformy kind of situation with people who, even if we are now both arguing that they should not perhaps have been kicked off of Twitter in the first place and they should be allowed back, but just not by these means, right. from a kind of moral optics standpoint is perhaps not the kind of person you might want to be associating with if you're trying to appeal to a mass audience as a future president of the United States of America, given that most people, whatever you think the legal outcome should have been about the Alex Jones case, don't think it's a nice sure. thing to do to tell people whose kids have just been killed in a horrific way that that did ever actually happen. Sure. I, I don't know what, in, in which way they were joined. Obviously, Elon 
challenged Alex Jones right away, you know, and you can quibble with how he did it, or you can say it should have been done differently. Elon's not a professional journalist. He's, you know, an amateur uh, commentator in addition to his all of his massive success. He did, he, he objected to, you know, what Alex Jones had said and then, you know, invited him to explain or apologize for it again. Um, why Vivek and Andrew Tate, et cetera, you know, we're, we're gonna, hanging out. I don't know. Because you're right that there, there could and should, and you'd think there would be a difference between um, this person was a victim of censorship policies, and I'm, I'm going to support their free speech, even though I think what they say is abominable. Mm -hmm. Which, and then there's, I, I, I object to what happened to this person because I like and agree with them, mm -hmm. or I want their fans to like me, or something, which doesn't seem like the right way to go for Alex Jones. But you know, but even people. Even people, you know, even if 99 out of 100 crazy things they say are crazy and harmful and bad, um, usually they're they're right about one thing. Um, that seems to be you, all it uh, takes. You, well, you, I don't know. You, uh, you, you, we, we talked about it. You, you, you liked what Andrew Tate had to say. Yeah, to but Piers there Morgan are a million week. and one people who are right in my subjective view about Palestine, and I don't need to go out of my way to say Andrew Tate happened to have the right uh, an opinion that I agree with. He might also think that Star Trek is great and the sky is blue, but that doesn't mean I'm going to him for a commentary on a regular basis. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> More Rising right after this.